Hey everybody, so I was checking the mail today and I realized that we've been in our building for two years and um, there was a video I made about that time frame ago where I did a, a tour of our facility as it was being constructed. And I thought it would be a fun and a little bit nostalgic to kind of recreate that video and show how things have evolved over that time span. Um, so without further ado, the first thing I'd like to, I guess, mention is where, where are we? We're, we are in Spring, Texas and uh, we are just north of Grand Parkway on Kirkendall. I think it's a pretty beneficial location for both us and our customer base. So as we walk into the reception area, this came to fruition pretty much just like we imagined it. We're very pleased with it. Um, we quickly come into what we call the war room or the conference room. Um, the first thing that's very important to see our shelf, our demo shelf. So here we got a bunch of sample parts, but this really only illustrates what's capable. It doesn't necessarily show the volumes that we're typically outputting. We are definitely proud of being able to put out around 30 to 40,000, if not more, parts per month. Um, but we show our full color capabilities on multi-jet using the 580. We show our vapor smoothing capabilities. We show our um, FDM material library. We show our resin library, some of the post-processing, like the chrome plating and all sorts of fun stuff on this shelf. So. Definitely helping the clients different options um, in here. So now this is definitely an important feature, and it's almost guaranteed that we're going to see some donuts here. So that's definitely definitely a motivator. We're proud of that. Um, I guess you could say. As we head upstairs, it's pretty straightforward as far as office space goes, and um, but there is one cool special feature I guess you could say that we have up here. Um, this is where our supervisors sit. They can take a look outside. We got. Um, some more offices, but there is one view that I think is pretty cool. Sneak preview of the uh, FDM print farm. Obviously, we'll see more of that in just a second. So, Outside of that, we have several more offices where Ryan, production manager, sit. I got our office down there and several more. And um, Actually, on the opposite side of the shop, we even have uh, more office space available to us over there. But uh, most of us normally sit up there. You might have noticed there wasn't many people up there. A lot of times, we're out on the shop floor um, doing some stuff out there. So. As we go out here into the shop, normally we would say two things here in person. One, watch your step in case there's any powder or anything on the floor, and two, assume it's hot. Other than that, it's a pretty safe environment. It's really a little bit jovial, lighthearted, and we're just having a good time, so. Here's the FDM. Split the camera back around here. Just kind of pan across. So at this time of the day, normally we have our morning round of prints already running. So you can see um, Clark and James over there, it's the FDM supervisor, and fleet manager probably at this point in time just working on the printers themselves making sure they're up and running so most of them already hopefully running on the FDM side of thing we handle probably about 20 different materials ranging from ABS and ASA being our two most common you got PETG TPU uh, TPE nylon polycarbonate polycarbonate FR and gets into all sorts of exotic materials as well so that's uh, definitely one of the pros to the FDM technology is this material diversity as well as its cost effectiveness, especially at scale with this type of printer. So as we flip around, this is our multi-jet. Anybody that knows iSolid probably knows that we're big fans of this technology. The reason we invested in it is because, as you can see with our print farm, our bread and butter is high volume manufacturing. And this technology is ideally suited for high volume additive manufacturing. You can get the end use functional quality that you need, you can get the production speeds that you need, and you can get the production finish that you would want for something of that application. We have every type of multi-jet that HP makes because each has its own pros and cons. We believe that's important. These are the 5200 or 5210 series to be exact. Uh, these are the latest and the greatest and uh, definitely made some iterative improvements that are very noticeable in the operating environment. So thank you to HP for doing that. Uh, we run these machines very heavy. They run twice a day, so they're pretty much nonstop, running for about 23 out of 24 hours any given day. This particular build was probably started around eight or nine o'clock in the morning. It'll run throughout the day. At the end of the day, we'll prep them and go again for another overnight build. So over here we got our uh, 580 as well as our 4210s. So they're um, 
580 is the full color multi jet in case you in case you weren't aware of that that's a specialty material machine so it's in a way mode right now it is locked up so i can't open you but it does have full color capabilities with all the benefits of multi jet in regards to strength and surface finish and all that other good stuff so over here we got a print that just finished up this one ran overnight it's going to be cooled it's got to have about a three to four hour downtime while it's doing some maintenance cycle and it'll be going again and this is our alternative uh, material printer right now it's running tpa so um that's a semi-flex material or actually it's one of the i think it's the most flexible multi-jet material uh we're major fans of tpa and i'll probably make a video about that uh, we're just so excited about some of the applications that you can do with this particular material so as i pan across here now we got the post-processing side of things you see the team the mjf team is hard at work getting all those parts out so this is the part of the day where we're just finishing up excavating the builds you can see some of the guys are vacuuming and cleaning up the the final bits of uh, of excavating that build and we got some guys putting the builds that just finished overnight into their natural cooling units these natural cooling units are amazing by the way it gives us uh, a lot more production capacity and more importantly by allowing it to naturally cool versus fast cooling you get better part quality so as I kind of spin the camera back around, I'm going to walk over here a little bit and back side of the shop, cut our massive amounts of compressed air and I do apologize for the background noise on that. A lot of the shop runs on compressed air, so we've got about 200 CFM available to us there. Here's our FDM, industrial FDM by Ascentium. Let me flip the camera and what's going on with that. It's not running right now. Uh, right now we're letting it heat soak as it prepares for a uh, peak print. So our FDM print farm is designed for kind of lower cost, more simple materials for high volume stuff. This machine is designed for a little bit of the opposite. It's designed for ultra polymers uh, in very intense environments. This peak, for example, can withstand extremely high temperatures, extremely chemical resistant, great for aerospace and oil and gas applications. That's one of our latest additions. Very excited about it. A little bit of a learning curve as is always expected, but um, we're very pleased with the way the results have been coming out as of recent, so good job to the team as well as the Centium for, for helping us out and get to there. So this is uh, might be a little bit of surprise if you did uh, actually see or maybe remember our previous video. The uh, reason this is a surprise right now is because this entire side of the shop was not even available. Um, we've actually doubled our footprint. This was all part of the long-term growth plan when we uh, moved into this building. But what is exciting is we're about two to three years ahead of schedule on that. So um, yeah, this entire side of the shop doubled our footprint since we moved in two years ago. So right now we have all of our post-processing, quality control, and shipping receiving on this side of the shop. The original side of the shop is all dedicated 100% to production where all of our printers are. So out in the corners over here, we got our Dimension automated blasters, our manual blasters for touch-ups or, or any fragile parts, as well as our shop painting and those types of things. Over here, we've got our dyeing machines, which is critical for basically the production MJF, turning those parts black to have a nice consistent end use functional kind of uh, finish to it. And we got our AMT, real proud of this machine, uh, and quality and results that he can obtain. Here's just a quick part, just kind of sitting around, it's a little bit dirty. Look at the finish, again, ignore the powder there, but just look at the surface finish on those types of parts. So if you don't know what AMT is, love to have a whole nother conversation about that. Basically it's a vapor smoothing process which uh, chemically treats the outer layers of the parts, gives them a nice watertight finish as well as a nice glossy sheen to it like that. So over here, we've got, uh, well actually first and foremost, let me show you this. This is our CNC machine. We don't necessarily advertise or do a lot of direct CNC work, but we keep that around for touch up and critical geometries on uh, on some of those polymer jobs. So that's a, again, a whole nother conversation we could have. We got Xander over here working on our SLA. So SLA is, um, one of those technologies that's a little bit more cost prohibitive on the high production volumes just because of the labor time that goes into it but it's a great technology to have around for uh the, its material capabilities like high temperature castable uh flexible resins all those types of things so i think we keep uh, pretty much the entire form labs material library in stock so um, over here we've got our fdm storage shelf basically these are all the parts that are in queue for post-processing support and removal and quality management in qc um, and some of the guys are currently working on SLA and some post-processing of different FDM parts here. And this is the most important part. We got Robert over here working on shipping out an order, getting that good to go. So Robert is our QC lead. 
um, measures each and every part pretty much that goes out of here. Uh, make sure everything's 100% within spec. So that's a really quick tour. Um, even then, it probably seemed a little bit longer than I was anticipating, but there's just a lot that I'd like to talk about. We're real proud of what we got going on here, and we do appreciate everybody's support. And uh, hopefully, you've seen the evolution, um, and we're, we're proud of it, and hope that we can have more people here at the shop to show firsthand. So drop a direct message if you have any questions, and uh, happy to talk to you about your project. So thank you.